like this is this is a great look everybody this is where who we're going to be with every thursday night and look here we are in charlotte and both the Bucks and the Panthers, they dropped winnable games in week one. Neither wants to go 0-2. Two. two teams that did that and made the playoffs a year ago, but over the last 30-ish 30, 30 years, making the postseason only happens about 12% of the time if you drop your first two games. That said, Steve, if Carolina loses another one tonight, two straight losses at home, will they make the playoffs? I, I, I hate to say it, but I'm just going to do it. It feels like a must-win game in week two. Oh, no, way like too it. soon. I know, I know. It is a must. It is a must win for the Carolina Panthers because they have already lost to the Rams in the conference, and now they're playing the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in a division. To be 0-2 at home in your division, in your conference, that plays a pivotal role for you down the line when you have to make a stretch for the playoff run. Mm -hmm. And look, the last loss uh, for both of these teams, it was frustrating. But when you look at the Panthers specifically, they hung in there with yes. the Rams. McCaffrey, he picked up right where he left off. The defense, they made plays. And Goff, he never really got into a rhythm. But the turnovers, they crushed the Panthers, especially the cam interception that was late in the fourth quarter, one of three giveaways for that Carolina offense. So, Joe, I'm going to throw it over to you here. And given that they kind of stuck around with the Rams in this game, last season's NFC champions, is there anything that you can take away from this loss for them? Do you feel encouraged by anything? Yeah, I, I definitely think the Panthers should be encouraged because they only lost by three points to the defending NFC champion. And there were a lot of bright spots. They started really slow. They only scored three points in the first half, but they got 24 in the second half. It looked like they were a little bit rusty early on. And so Ron Rivera can sell to this team that they were a little bit rusty. They played better in the second half. And if you look at what their offensive line did, their offensive line played really well in that game. They shut out Aaron Donald, defending player of the year on defense. And if that can continue, they can have a really good team this year. They went into this game, really the main concern was, let's see how Cam Newton is. Because whatever happens in Carolina is going to happen through and with Cam Newton if they're going to get to where they want to be. And I was like, this is pretty good for what Cam has gone through. The two shoulder surgeries, the, the, the foot injury, the way he was throwing the ball. Norv Turner had him dropping back, getting that ball out of his hands. Of course, he had some bad throws. Uh, he had some bad throws, missed more on, on a seven route, and then uh, the ball got tipped on, on a, on a sc uh, screen that, that turned out to be a fumble. But besides that, he was throwing the ball very well. I was encouraged with what I saw from the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, and we're really going to dig into this, what Cam Newton needs to do tonight, because we didn't see him scramble that much last week. We didn't see him throw down the field. But on the other side of this matchup is Tampa Bay. So him in our other two teammates from inside the stadium we have Andrew Siciliano and Steve Mariucci for more on the Buccaneers guys hey guys as we are inside where it is roughly like 95 degrees here and Mooch is not wearing the Michael Irvin collection I'm kind of disappointed where's your green I don't have I'm, I'm gonna buy that from Michael when he has a garage sale <laughs> okay yeah good luck with that we heard about the 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 Panthers and how maybe it is a good loss if there is such a thing what if anything Mooch, does Bruce Arians take from his team's loss last week to the 49? Yeah, Andrew, whether you're a, a veteran kind of a coach or a first-time coach, boy, you learn a lot in that first game and in the first month. But he learned a lot about his player personnel. He learned a lot about his coaching staff. For example, he's learning about Jameis Winston. Yeah, he's known him since ninth grade and all of that. But he finally gets to go through the ups and downs of a game, see some great things, and then see some crazy things. He's, gonna, he's learning all about him. He's learning about Ronald Jones, the young guy running back from USC second year player pretty darn good yeah. way better than he showed as a rookie and then he also learned that Mike Evans needs to be more involved in this the other thing the big thing though he's training Byron Leftwich to be the play caller now Bruce has been play calling his whole life that's what he loves to do some of these offensive guys they never give it up he's training Byron Leftwich to be the play caller on offense so there's going to be a learning curve and Bruce is going to take him along and take him under his wing and Leftwich did call plays last year in Arizona after the staff shakeup and Steve Wilkes was fired but now he's doing it full time for a quarterback in the fifth and final year of his contract who last week threw three picks although two of them Arian said weren't his fault 
But he also, we should remember, had two interceptions, would-be interceptions, that were dropped. So we find out a lot, potentially more, about Jameis and Bruce Arians mm -hmm. coming up tonight, Colleen. Oh, thank you, guys. That's right. This is a big year for Jameis Winston, but it's a big night here for Cam Newton, who's rolling up to the game there. He's got another scarf on. I don't know what that means for his play on the field, but he's hoping to break a streak of seven straight losses as the starter.